you feel like is the best black artist and stand up face to face in a room with them and it will eat that a lot. Our relationship, my Eminem is, Dr. Dre is Eminem's. I see him offended by what he said. Cause I wasn't intending to say anything about that. I was gonna be quiet about it because I didn't want him to feel like he brought a problem. For a significant stretch of time, Eminem and 50 Cent have maintained a deep and enduring friendship, one that originated with Eminem's pivotal role in introducing 50 Cent to the music industry. Their friendship has endured through the years, even as 50 Cent found himself embroiled in various conflicts. Eminem is stepping forward to fiercely defend his close friend, issuing a stern warning to any rapper who dares to engage in further feuds with 50 Cent. Let anyone who didn't know the story of what had went on with Fifth, this is what he's been through and this is where he's at now. Renowned not only for his incredible beats and exceptional rapping skills, 50 Cent has also gained widespread recognition for his razor-sharp wit and off-camera roasting abilities. If there's only one area where he truly excels, it's in delivering scorching verbal takedowns. 50 Cent has honed the art of mercilessly poking fun at individuals from all walks of life. It appears that hardly anyone within the music industry has remained untouched by his playful yet pointed banter. While some have taken it in stride and others have chosen to engage in verbal sparring, there's no denying denying that 50 Cent's comedic assault shows no signs of slowing down. Through it all, his steadfast ally Eminem has constantly stood by his side. first time I met 50 was at a release party. Was it in New York? I think it was in New York. I met him. I think we talked in the back room, right? Adopting the slim shady persona for his rap artistry, Eminem swiftly rose to prominence within the Detroit hip hop community. In 1998, fate led him to a pivotal encounter with Dr. Dre, a meeting that would significantly shape his rap journey. While you in work, she's with some dude trying to get off, slit in the throat, cut this as his musical path unfolded, Eminem's trajectory intersected with an intriguing mixtape by a certain artist, 50 Cent, in 2002. This discovery marked the beginning of a profound collaboration as they ventured into the recording studio. Every song he was doing was so crazy we couldn't, there was nothing to get rid of. There was nothing that we could even say, oh, that would be cool for a mixtape. Beyond their mentor-mentee dynamic, Eminem and 50 Cent share an unbreakable bond of best friendship, standing by each other's side through the highs and lows of their careers, including navigating through conflicts and gracing the stages of prestigious award ceremonies. In this time, it appears he is fulfilling his duties as 50's friend by sending warnings to those rappers who will cause any harm to his friend. I don't know if we really set, to, uh, set out to create anything, it was more Let's just make the best music that we can make. In the past, 50 has been involved in several feuds. The entrance of 50 Cent is like a burst of energy, ensuring that dull moments are left far behind. A ripple of anticipation spreads whenever his name is mentioned among fellow rappers and singers. Amidst numerous feuds he is famous for, one of them is his feud with the boogeyman Suge Knight. It's funny because he showed up to the end club video. He came and it was like, Shug's outside! Shug's outside! Everybody was like, Shug, Shug, Shug! He was running, dropping, Shug, Shug! Light like, man, everybody going for out. During the late 1990s and early 2000s, as Eminem embarked on his music career, he encountered considerable competition and numerous hurdles. Among those figures was Suge Knight, known for his intimidating aspiring talents in the rap industry. Eminem, too, faced his share of challenges from the environment. You really doing those things you rapping about and you talking about, I can respect that. Right. If somebody else writing your rhymes, uh, somebody else is you telling somebody else's story, that really don't mean nothing. Surprisingly, Suge Knight was resolute in his efforts to remove Eminem from the scene, even resorting to multiple alleged attempts on his life. On two distinct occasions, there were suspicions that Suge tried to eliminate Eminem. These allegations were first revealed by Byron Big Nas William, who had served as Eminem's bodyguard. He recounts that the purported assault took place for the first time in 2001 at the Source Hip Hop Awards. Big Nas entered the picture during Eminem's peak with My Name Is. Despite initially declining Eminem's collaboration proposal, Nas eventually had a change of heart and decided to give it a try. So it was a, it was a duality of beef going on at the same time during the time I was protecting this guy. On their initial night of collaboration, 
Eminem and Nas found themselves in a situation where Nas had to protect Eminem from a potential danger. While Nas initially joined the team with the aim of establishing connections with music industry executives as a producer, their main priority shifted to ensuring Eminem's security. He said, There was a situation at the Source Awards, which was our first encounter with Suge Knight and his henchmen. They had it to where the artist couldn't sit with the bodyguards. I notice M is in the aisle, and he is beefing with all these guys in red shirts. This is what they said. Death Row m Suge Knight sent us to strong arm Eminem and it's going down. I had to snatch M up and call Dre, because he was backstage. Eminem and his group held a false sense of security, unaware that they were actually caught in the feud between Suge Knight's Death Row Records and Dr. Dre. As Eminem took his seat, a group of men wearing red shirts surrounded him, shouting Death Row, and alleging that they were sent by Suge to disrupt the situation. All these guys in red shirts surround him. And I'm looking at M's face and I'm looking at these guys. I'm like, shit, somebody right. After the Source Hip Hop Awards incident, Big Nas remained vigilant and implemented measures to ensure Eminem's safety was safeguarded. He also requested a standby car for unforeseen emergencies, but due to stringent security protocols, the limousines were not permitted to park near the red carpet only briefly. The limo's pulling off as we're coming out. Death Row's behind us. So I'm like, shit! Consequently, Big Nas, Dr. Dre, and Dre's security team had to remain vigilant backstage, ensuring Eminem's safety from any potential threats. Dr. Dre and his team maintained a formidable presence, deterring any unauthorized approaches, while Nas positioned himself in front of Eminem and his group, poised to intervene instantly to protect Eminem. You couldn't even see him behind me. So the whole time, I'm on knockout mode or breakneck mode. You know, I'm more dangerous with my hands than I am with a gun. However, later on it was disclosed Suge made all this fuss because of 50. 50 Cent had a clear aspiration to make it big in the music world, and it was Eminem who saw his potential and determination. After getting his hands on 50 Cent's Guess Who's Back CD, Eminem was quick to acknowledge his talent and drive. He wasted no time in reaching out to Dr. Dre to share the untapped potential he had noticed in the artist's videos. I brought it to Dre. Dre heard it, he was sold, and basically we said, let's, let's do a joint venture. During that period, Suge had just been released from a five-year prison term, and he was in the process of restoring his record company's reputation. Little did he know that his former signee, Dr. Dre, had brought in new talent, including 50 Cent, who would later emerge as his major industry rival. It's unfortunate that things turned out the way they did, but you know, I, you know, Nobody knows what the future holds, exactly. and I'm just trying to move on with my life." While filming the music video for his now iconic track, In The Club, 50 Cent was in the studio, a song that played a pivotal role in elevating his career. Amidst the shoot, a voice suddenly exclaimed, Suge Knight is in the house, sparking a hint of chaos and commotion. His mic said, Suge Knight here. I was at the bar, gang was there, he was shooting in the club scene. Reportedly, Suge Knight approached 50 Cent accompanied by a group of around 30 individuals, catching everyone off guard. He assertively conveyed his presence and intention to closely monitor the situation. Consequently, 50 Cent's team quickly dispersed in the face of the imposing figure of the West Coast mogul. And Suge looked at him, and he took a puff of cigar, and he blew it out, and he did like this, and he left. With this, the encounter reached its conclusion. Suge likely anticipated a different reaction, perhaps expecting 50 Cent to plead for leniency. However, the response he received was far from submissive. Evidently, 50 Cent exhibited no apprehension in the face of the imposing group before him. Following this incident, Suge recognized that attempting to intimidate 50 would yield no advantages, and 50 Cent proceeded to create one of the most unforgettable music videos in history. 50's fans also expressed their emotions for their idol. One of them said, One thing you can see is how strategic and how much of a leader 50 is. That's what separates him from the rest. Another said, Seeing how inspiring he is and that he got off the streets for good for his son, it sucks how his relationship with his son is gone now. Someone should send his son this video as a perspective. While the exact reason for Suge's appearance on that particular day remained unclear, 
Eminem held certain insights into the matter. We have a chance to maybe do something with him. Let's, you know, let's try to see what's up. So I think the first time I met 50 was at a release party. Was it in New York? Given Suge's documented history of plotting harm and his previous attempts to target Eminem, it strongly suggests that his presence at the In The Club studio was likely part of a sinister plan to eliminate 50 Cent. No action, no business. Every is just running, is getting up out of there. Every New York, <laughs> whatever you name, all these that was like the they write books. Not only has 50 Cent been involved in a feud with Shook, but he also has a very unpleasant history with Jay-Z. Ironically, even though he stands as one of the top-selling rappers in music history, 50 Cent's Grammy Award count remains at zero. Throughout his career, he has consistently voiced his conviction that the music industry has conspired against him right from the start, pointedly targeting Jay-Z, who claims an impressive 24 Grammy Awards. 50 Cent's dissatisfaction has only deepened. The content is similar to what I would do. They didn't recognize mine. They gave me Grammys when I was with them, when I'm on records with them and other than that. As 50 Cent forged his own path, he held the belief that certain artists received preferential treatment within the music industry. He held the perspective that Jay-Z's triumphs had cast a shadow over his own accomplishments, leading to a sense of rivalry between them. I don't see them actually want to accomplish having enough. The chronology of Jay-Z and 50 Cent's interactions is intricate. Presently, 50 Cent still harbors enduring sentiments towards Hav. Yet, he concedes that the root cause of their discord might extend beyond Jay-Z alone. Despite their disparities, 50 appears to entertain the notion that the underlying origin of their strain remains enigmatic, perhaps even to the influential mogul himself. What is the issue? You see what I'm saying? Like, and I, um, with, with him, because like with Nori, Nori was, he had uh, communication. He said, yeah, so I talked to the big homies. Nevertheless, Eminem remains fiercely loyal to his closest companion, not only standing by him during challenging moments, but also purportedly issuing cautionary messages to any rappers contemplating harm against 50 Cent. 